Jewish Education and Media is pleased to present L'Chaim, a program that highlights the people, issues, and events of importance to the Jewish community. Now here is your host, Rabbi Mark Golub. I'm Mark Golub, and one of the biggest hit series on Netflix is a gripping, exciting, extremely well-written story about an Israeli Special Forces unit operating on the West Bank, the Israelis posing as Arab Palestinians, trying to locate and kill major Palestinian terrorists who've murdered countless Israeli citizens. And what's most striking and unusual about the series is that it gives viewers a sense of who the Palestinian people are, the extent to which they are husbands and wives, parents and children, brothers and sisters. There's no question why the Israelis are searching for the individual terrorists. The Israelis are the good guys. But there's a human nuance to the series that one rarely sees ever on television, whether it deals with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict or any other conflict around the world. It is the human dimension to the series which complements the action and suspense and real-life pain that characters experience in the course of the story. The series is called Fauda which in Arabic means chaos. As we tape this edition of the Chaim, Fauda has completed two seasons, and as we tape, every episode of both seasons can be watched on Netflix. The series was co-conceived and co-written by one Israeli actor and screenwriter, Lior Raz, who also plays the lead character in the series, Daron, and by veteran journalist and Middle East analyst for the Times of Israel, whom you've seen many times here on JBS, Avi Ezekharov. The two men based their series, Fauda, on their own personal experiences when they served in the IDF Defense Forces, a unit called Du Devan, also known as Unit 217. And much of Fauda's success comes from its sense of realism because it's written by men who actually lived the life of counterterrorism. So in 2018, Fauda won 11 Israeli Academy Awards, including Best TV Series, Best Actor for Lior Raz, Best Screenplay, Best Casting, Best Cinematography, Best Special Effects, as well as awards in five other categories. My wife Ruth and I love the series. If you haven't seen it and you have Netflix, 
Start watching as soon as you possibly can. Watch the version in Hebrew with English subtitles. The English dubbed version distorts the experience. I believe you will love it also. And the very first Israeli you see in the very first episode of Fauda is a member of the unit named Ellie, who actually shot in the leg in the first episode and then comes back with a major role in season two as commander of the counterterrorism unit. And lucky, lucky us, the superb Israeli actor who plays Ellie is my special guest on this edition of L'Chaim. It's an honor to introduce you to Yaakov Zara Daniel, an Israeli veteran actor of stage, screen, television. He's played the lead in four feature films. And Yaakov Daniel also served in a special forces unit in the IDF. It is so wonderful to have you here. Yasha Koach, just Kol Tuv. It is a fabulous series. And you are out of this world, Yotze Minaklal. Thank and you. it's thrilling for me to have you at this table. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Me too. Thank you to invite me here. You are very sweet. Okay, so first I want to talk about you, then I want to talk about the series. I want just to say something. There is no bad and good in this series. No bad and good. It's about conflict. Yaakov, I'm happy to watch the series with you. Thank you. There's bad and good. There is without question. But let's get to that in a moment. All right. Okay. So first, you are a Sabra, yes? Native Israeli. Yes. Born in Israel. Where yes. are you born? I was born in uh, Hulon, a uh, city near Tel Aviv. Uh, and then I moved to Arad. It's a uh, small city up to the Dead Sea, near the Dead Sea, in the desert. How old are you roughly when you moved to Arad? Three years. So you were still a child? Yeah. Is there anything you can tell us about your childhood that you're comfortable telling us? Uh, Do you have an interesting childhood? Very interesting. Because? Uh, I grew up in the boarding school mm -hmm. um, because of uh, my uh, mother's death. Uh, so my father couldn't. Uh, I'm very sorry. It's okay. Uh, Siblings? Did you have a brother or sister? Yeah, I have three sisters and a brother, and big brother. Did they move with you to the boarding yeah. school? Yeah, uh, three, three of my sisters come with me, and we grew up together because my father wants us to be That's lovely. What's together. your father's name? Yossi. Yosef. Yosef. Was it hard in the boarding school, or did you it have It was wonderful. Wonderful. What kind of Jewish home did you have in the first three years of your life or however? I don't or, remember. Okay. What kind of Jewish life was there in the boarding school? We are keeping Shabbat. We are doing Kiddush and uh, all the holidays we are doing together in a big, uh, in a big hall, you say? Hall? Ulam? Yes, yes. Hall. And we do it together and everybody reads something <laughs> and a song and... Nice uh, memories? Great memories. That's lovely. The holiday was the greatest. And we go all the time to travel in Israel, uh, to three days in the desert, three days in the, in, we're in a week in Jerusalem. And we know all, the, all Israel. After sc school, well, you go to high school where? In Arad. In Arad. And then you go into the IDF. Yeah. And you were in a special forces unit? Yes. What was that like? Uh, it's abivalenti, you can say, because you're doing, uh, you feel you're doing a very meaningful uh, job. And I served my, uh, I served the people in Israel. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to do something that's not uh, very uh, hard or I don't want to do a job. There is a several jobs that you can do in the army. So uh, I prefer the special unit the, that I feel that I'm doing something, not just for the, the, pop, the people and then for the country and for Israel, also for me mm -hmm. because it's growing up me. 
-hmm. it's making it's it's making me more better mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it was so complicated because there is a lot of situation that you uh, over uh, you are doing in the serve there is a very difficult situation when you uh, go into some uh, operation and your friends died so <laughs> it's there's a very difficult situation Painful, for yes. 19 years old Yes. Or oh, 20 years yes. old. We are here in uh, the United States. They are going to a college, and we are in the uh, powerful of uh, our life, in the powerful uh, age of our life. We are going to the serve the country with all my uh, and with with all our heart and with all our uh, um, want. Uh, you know, we want to do it. We feel shlichut. How do you say shlichut? Your messengers. Your Yes, representatives, representing the messengers, and we wanted to do it, uh, and we do it uh, with a lot of love, but with a lot of uh, hard mm -hmm. and uh, difficult. By the way, it sounds like at times it was very painful. Yeah, it was painful, but you don't you don't think about it. You don't feel you don't uh, feel fear, fear. But you don't feel fear. No. Really? Yes, because you are in a team. Mm -hmm. And this team, and this my friend, it's like my brother. Mm -hmm. We all uh, uh, keep keeping on each other. And you feel very... Uh, responsible, one for the other? Responsible uh, for an, And everybody give to each other co confidence mm -hmm. and, uh, and strong so you feel you don't feel fear you go to the operation and you don't think about nothing they just do the job how similar was the unit you were in to the unit we see in fauda similar or not really yes there is uh, similar things but we cannot talk about it I so understand. uh uh, but there is similar things. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. So you're in the, how many years are you in the unit? Three years. Three years. Then you're out of the IDF. Yeah. And what do you choose to do? I mean, one of the things that's so interesting is, Yaakov, you choose to be an actor. Yes. I have to understand how, how in the world. How stupid I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dreamer. You're a dreamer, aren't you? Yes, it was my, my dream. And, uh, From when? When does it start? I think about it. Um, everybody say in a childhood, and I also will say in a childhood, because uh, in the place I was, uh, in the Pnimiya, uh, we are doing a show in uh, all the Chagim. For the holidays. For the holidays in Purim, in Hanukkah, and yes. in the Bar Mitzvah. Yes. So we're doing a show, and I remember that where, while I was on the stage, I feel like I am in the comfort zone. I was like outside of my problem, outside of my uh, uh, struggles, out of my. Uh, um, Pain. It was a form of escape for you, was it not? Yes. I, f I found my place there. And now, uh, th what is the, uh, the nice things that in my army I also need to mm -hmm. act. act. Yes, yes. So yes. it's come together. Okay. Um, in the series, all of the people in the unit know Arabic very, very well. Did you know Arabic well? Yeah, I learned in the army and also a little before. But uh, we need to practice our Arabic uh, language because there is uh, many... Uh, dialect? Dialect. Yes. You know, if you are in the north of Israel, your dialect will be like this. And if you are in, the, in Gaza or, or in uh, Hebron, it's a different dialect.
So we worked and we practiced with a teacher to be correct, to be... Uh, Did you get pretty good at it? Yeah, I think so, you say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's after the IDF. You now tell me that even as a child, even as somebody in school, you're already thinking of being an actor. Yeah. How do you begin to implement that? What do you do? I mean, you are not simply an actor. You're an accomplished actor who's done wonderful work. Thank you. That doesn't happen by accident. That takes enormous work, Yaakov. You're right. So, ha so just tell us a little bit about how that process worked for you. So after the Army, I uh, go to work to make some money uh, because the school, uh, all the academic school of acting, uh, academic... Uh, Acting school is uh, on uh, Tel Aviv, so I need to move to Tel Aviv. I never been in Tel Aviv. It's, it's it was my first time in Tel Aviv. It's it's a big city. Yes. It's not New York. But Roughly, how old city. are you when you mo moved to Tel Aviv? Uh, twenty two. So twenty two. It's the first time you're in Tel Aviv. Yeah. Wow. But in Israel, after the army, all the young people uh, after the army went to do a trip, uh, yeah, go travel, to India, right. yes. go to uh, yes. South America, yes. to, uh, you know... Kathmandu. Uh, do, you <laughs> know, parties and to clear the, the head from the army. It's, uh, because it's very tough three years. Yeah. So everybody go. I didn't want to go. I didn't want... I want, first of all, go to uh, learn something. Because first of all, I don't have uh, the. Uh, you I have the financial means. Yes, to go and trip and go to learn. I need to work. I need to. I need to uh, do something. Uh, so I went to Tel Aviv and um, I uh, start uh, looking for uh, uh, the best uh, acting school uh, in Tel Aviv. Uh -huh. And I. Uh, go into uh, doing audition uh, it's uh, three auditions that you need to do you didn't you need to sing i never sing <laughs> i i I, <laughs> I can say that didn't take me because of my singer uh, uh, and then they took me to say you you're good you're okay and that must have been very thrilling for you yes yes and um uh, and you're still a kid. I mean, you're post IDF, but you're in your early twenties here. Yeah, you after you pass pass the IDF, you're not kid yes, anymore. Yes, you're right. That's not <laughs> fair for me. To, no, I, you're exactly right. But you're still on the on the young side. Yes. And it must have been wonderful that somebody said, "Yaakov, you're good enough." Yes, it was wonderful, and that then you understand you are good. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. for yourself, that the other eyes mm -hmm. see you and mm -hmm. say you are good. So you are in the in the correct place. You are in the correct place, and you are in correct uh, uh, in your correct dream. Mm -hmm. Because you can, uh, there is some people that go want to be an actor, but they are not actors. Uh, they dream about actor. You can dream about a lot of things, but if you don't have it. You don't have it. It's so interesting. I want you to try to define for me. And I know in some way it's, too, it's very individual. But what is it that distinguishes somebody who says, I'd like to be an actor, and then there's the, there are those people who have something in them. What is it that's something? I think the perspective of of life how do you see life how do you see person how do you see people how no how do you see i correct this how do you feel people because uh, to do in to be in a character or you need to feel people and i don't judge people i look at them i look people and i say First of all, everybody got trouble. Everybody suffer. Every, everybody uh, have something 
not good in his life, something happened to him, something make him happy. And I don't judge people, I see people like, like me. And I think this is what make me, uh, um, I don't say easier, but uh, to be true, mm -hmm. to be true. And to to bring some life of someone to the screen. Mm -hmm. This is the. I'm like a. Not a. How do you say? A, a, I'm a deliver. Mm -hmm. You deliver some mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. In America, actors, especially movie actors, very often become celebrities. Is there celebrity in Israel? Yes, of course. Is that fun for you? Yes. That's because pe people give you love. Yes. You know. And they appreciate your work. You appreciate, they appreciate my work and they give me love. So <laughs> it's okay. You know, you walk in the street and uh, now with you the selfie. The, in the earliest there is a sign, but now it's a selfie. So you need to stop and do selfie. And sometimes when you are in the restaurant and you eat and then someone comes to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I finish to eat and after this. So it's funny, but uh, it's, it's okay. They give you love, so you bring love mm -hmm. back. That's wonderful. I don't want to make it sound like it happened overnight. What was the it's arc? It's not. No. When I go to, uh, to, the, uh, to the school, to the, to the acting uh, academic, I need help. I need some help, uh, financial help. So I went to the uh, FIDF. Uh, Friends of the idea. Yes, and they had scholarships for uh, uh, people like me who was in the army and they cannot uh, uh, afford the schooling. Yes. So uh, here, uh, uh, these uh, wonderful people here, Barbara and Art, uh, uh, took me. Uh, and uh, help me for the scholarship for three years and give money. They don't know me and then don't know who I am, just want to uh, 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 give something for, mm -hmm. the, for the Israeli uh, soldiers. And it's, uh, so I want to take, uh, say thanks uh, here and, uh, and uh, the why I come to New York is also to, uh, to visit see them, them yes, and uh, see them in their home, and so uh, that's lovely of you to say. Um, and I want to make sure everybody understands. Uh, as Yaakov just said, the FIDF has scholarships, which not only Americans but Jews all over the world who contribute can make a scholarship possible for a. In essence, somebody who served not only the state of Israel but the Jewish people through the IDF. And uh, Yaakov, the reason he's here, by the way, is that Arthur and Barbara Wernicke are two of my dearest friends, as they are dear friends of Yaakov and they're dear friends of JBS. And they have spoken to me about you in the most glowing, wonderful terms. For years and years, um, they're in my chavura. I'm very lucky mm -hmm. to have them. And they made sure that you and I got to sit together. I am very grateful to them. Finish the story, then I want to go into Fauda. Right. I want to know, how long does it take from the time you start acting school to the time when you feel, oh, you know what? I'm now a legitimate actor, and I have a career. I'm making money, and I mm -hmm. can feel a certain sense of accomplishment. What's the arc there? Wow. So <laughs> I will always say that I'm a late bloomer because uh, everything I'm doing is very hard. And I was, <laughs> it's very hard in a relationship, in everything. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but I like this. I like the hard work because after hard work, something happened. It's like a tree. Yes. You need to you plant it. Right. Yes, and now uh, you see the fruit after seven years or yes. something like this. So 
we are in in Parashat Hashavua, it's about Yaakov who work in uh, to get uh, Rachel, and so he works seven years. As uh, so, it's similar like me, like my story. Because after I finished the uh, the school, I just wondering what I'm doing. So I lo I do a little uh, theater, uh, fringe theater, no money, and. Uh, a short m movie with the uh, uh, students from the uh, Kolnoa uh, Film School. Do a lot of film school uh, movies, short and. But I practice, 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 and then uh, something happened. It's a funny story that I come to a show that is called Bubot. It's a puppies. It's a telenovela. It's one hundred. Uh, uh, episode, uh, and I come for, in the first episode, uh, I just walk in, this was my role, I was like, come in and look, it was uh, Gal Gadot, and look, about her, look at her, and this is my role. And then after uh, one month, they call me back, and they say, we wrote for you 440 episodes. You're getting. <laughs> say what? So this was my start. It was lucky, but they oh, knew me. Yes. By the way, that's a classic, classic story, story. In, in, in the in the world of acting. Yes. The actor who has it, it has a presence, and others in the profession they recognize it. When you've got it, you've got it. And was it what you're saying is, someone recognized. Yes. Although you were only on camera for a moment. Yes. All you really did if was you look. Blinked, you didn't see me. <laughs> but they saw you. Yes. Someone Call a kavod. Thank you. That is wonderful. So and then after this, I start doing uh, series and movies, and and it was like this, this, and then I do it very uh, intimate and very. Uh, Touching movie called Next to Her, the, and it was very uh, fabulous movie, very sad and uh, very. You need to see it. It's called Next to Her, Atli Laila in Hebrew. Um, I don't know, want to tell the story, but uh, after the movie, I was uh, nominated for uh, the Academy. Uh, Mazal Tov. Uh, like the Oscar, the yes. Israeli Oscar, and uh, and something happened. Like you say, people see me, and to start to giving me a big uh, role in several series, and then then come uh, hostages, and then come uh, metum temet, and then come uh, another, I don't remember, and then come uh, Fauda. Mitsuyan. That's a lovely story. Yeah. Mazalto, that's fabulous. It doesn't yeah. happen by accident and it takes hard, hard work. Hard yes. work. It I was in work. my home, I didn't take taxi. I was need I need to take bus. Yes. I don't have a car. Bus from Arad. Uh, after this I go to Dimona and I work in Dimona, it's a small city. I doing theater there and I need to take a bus to, to the shooting from Dimona to Tel Aviv. From Dimona to Tel Aviv. And I slept in a couch and yes. friends' couch. Yes. But it's worth this. All the work paid off. Yes. All the work paid and off. And I said, hard work, giving fruits. Mazal tov. Okay, now I want to talk about how you view Israeli life and Fauda in the context of, the, of it. You know, I'm listening to hear you talk about your experience in the IDF and how you felt inside and how it was not simply... You know, okay, you graduated high school. Uh, you, you graduated high school, and before you go to college, you, you spend three years in the IDF. You said you wanted to, in some way, make this meaningful. Did I understand you correctly? Yeah. Okay. How do you feel at the moment? The younger generation in Israel is viewing the years in the IDF. Do you think, in general, young people today in Israel feel that they're doing something important, or in some way? Yaakov, do they resent it? Okay. 
first of all, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of opinions in everything. Of course. So there's a young people. They feel, they want, they practice to come to the army and want to serve. Uh, it's come from home, it's come from friends, it's come from school, it's come from the country, it's come from everywhere. To serve in the, in the Israeli army, it's, uh, it's very important. It's like... Uh, you feel part of the of Israel country if you serve. It's uh, and there's a there's a lot of mythos. Uh, the Israeli uh, soldier is like I, I cannot say it, but they're like a god, you know. And there's very uh, respect for the Israeli soldier. So every young, a lot of young people, uh, I say 80% mm -hmm. want to serve. Mm -hmm. 80%. I don't know the real I number. But what you mean is it feels like a lot. A lot of people want to serve, but there is people, and I understand them, young people, they don't see them in the army. It's very hard. It doesn't fit to them. Mm -hmm. Because maybe they have a, a really a weak soul or something, and they don't be, want to be in this situation. There is another option to uh, serve the public or do something else. Not everybody is uh, fixed to the army. You need to understand it. But there's a lot of people, and a lot of young people want to serve the the, uh, the Israeli and feel patriot. There's a lot of patriotic. There is. Well. Yes, there is. Do you worry for patriotism in Israel? Too much patriotism, it's not good. But if are you worried there isn't enough? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're a very complicated country, as you know. There's a lot of con conflict. Every, th every way you look, mm -hmm. uh, Israel, Palestine, it's... Uh, Jewish, not Jewish, Haredim, uh, uh, not Haredim, mm -hmm. Chilonim, yes. Haredim, Ashkenazim, Mizrahim, and you can, uh, women, men, <laughs> and we are, because of this, because all those conflicts become a very good series, very good movies. <laughs> Yes, yes, because of this conflict, yes. uh, our mind is very, uh, you know, and it's, and it's make, our, make us uh, um, uh, to be very uh, artist. Yes, artistic, yes. Do you feel you have any sense, feel for, how American Jews view Israel? In other words, I don't know how much experience you've had outside of Barbara and Art of experiencing American Jews. Do you have any feel for American Jewry? Yeah. Okay. Is there something you wish American Jews understood about Israeli life which you think would help them much better embrace and understand what Israel is all about? And when I say Israel, I'm talking about the Israeli people, the Israeli experience. Is there something you wish American Jews understood better? Yeah, it's a good question. Let me think about it. Because I met a lot of American Jewish people and they uh, admire Israel, admire the soldier, love Israel, love Jewish uh, community. They love Israel they, and they're very open in Open, open the, their heart to the soldier of Israel and, uh, and the citizen of Israel. And they very, very care about Israel. And I, I think without the Jewish community in America, uh, without them love to Israel, Israel, it 
it was very difficult to Israel to be Israel. It would be more difficult. More right? difficult. Mm -hmm. We need this this support. Mm -hmm. That's that one thing. About what you say, mm -hmm. there is a lot of type of Israeli and a lot of type of thinking uh, of uh, ideology. Attitudes? Yes, mm -hmm. and a, a different uh, ideology. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they need to to be open-minded. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I want them to know about the Israeli. We are very open-minded and we are very straight. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you think there are times when the American Jew... And we are not politically correct. <laughs> You're not politically correct. It sounds like you think sometimes American Jews oversimplify who the Israeli people are and stereotype them in some way. Assume that all Israelis are this or all Israelis are that. And you're saying sometimes... But it's normal. Yes, it it's is. It's normal. But it, it's also very frustrating, I would imagine, yes, to an Israeli. For, for every people. Yes. Yeah, because I see you, uh, I don't know, and I have something in my head. Very fair. Very fair. There's a large swath of American Jews who are critical of the state of Israel who feel Israel has not done enough for the Palestinian. They don't like Benjamin Netanyahu. They're upset that the Haredi, uh, the chief rabbinate, has too much power and that there's no Jewish pluralism in the state of Israel. That if they go to the Western Wall, they can't stand with their wife or a woman can't read the Torah at the Western Wall. And all of these issues create in a, in a section of the Jewish community enormous criticism about Israel. Is that fair in your mind? First of all, we all live there. Yes. They are not live there. Yes. We are, he we are in Israel and they are not in Israel. They are not response of us. We are response of our life, and we we didn't choose, but we are living there. Our home, our family is there. So in the everyday uh, l life, we don't think about the American and what they are thinking. We live our life mm -hmm. in Israel, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of movement, and every day something happens in Israel. Every second, something happened in Israel, and uh, there's a lot of uh, they ought, uh, different opinions. They have uh, different opinions in Israel and outside Israel, and it's a it's a fowder, it's a chaos. <laughs> it's wonderful. Okay, so I want to tell you my reaction to fowder. All right. You heard me say in the open. One of the things that fowder does which I believe they do, the series does extraordinarily well, is Palestinians become people. Mm -hmm. They're not... Uh, they are people. You know? Yes, but, <laughs> yes, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the first, in some way, Fauda is the only time we get to see, Americans get to see, forget American Jews, Americans get to see into Palestinian life. And in the first episode, the very first episode, Again, where you, you're wounded, there's a wedding. Mm. There's a bride and a groom. Lovely young people. Mm -hmm. We fall in love with them. Am I right? Yes. Okay. And we go into this wedding, and although it's not a Jewish wedding, there's a feel to it that's so loving and so family. And, and there's the mother, and there's the grandmother, and then there. And all they want is that this young couple start their life happy and have a good life. And then we see the celebration. We see the dancing. We see the music. Now, at the same time, there's a subplot where the unit is looking for the panther, yeah. and he's the brother of the, of the bra a groom, 
and it turns out they've just learned they thought he was dead, but lo and behold, it turns out he's not dead. He, they think he may come to the wedding, and therefore the unit sends in members of their unit, including Leor Raz, who plays Daron, who is pretending to be a waiter, and ultimately chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. Tragically, the groom is killed, and this sets up much of what happens in the entire first episode. Mm -hmm. But I'm not talking about the action. I'm talking about the people. I'm saying that one of the things you come away with is an appreciation in a different way than Americans normally think of the other, whether it's an Arab, whether it's a Muslim, whether it's a Palestinian. That is, in my view, Yaakov, I opening. To what extent do you feel I'm being fair in my description? To what extent do you feel I'm being overly romantic? Am I correct? Uh, yes. Yes. You are... Um, first of all, when you see a serious, you see, is, you see it behind your eyes. And what you see, I cannot... Uh, not agree with you because it's my way your yes eyes. everybody has their own experience and i say you're correct because what uh, uh what happened this series to be such a success as to see the both of sides to see the both people to see the both uh, problem and this is the magic of the Syria. The, and I told you before, there is no good and bad. There is a bad situation. Mm -hmm. I find that so interesting because... I've been there. I've been there in the army and I know it, it's difficult. It's difficult. What does that mean, you've been there? I've been in these places. I see the... We are doing our job. But there is another side. What's the other side? The Palestinian side. What's the Palestinian side? I don't understand. <sighs> I think mostly they want to live them life. To bring food to home, to live uh, uh, in honest. Let me ask you something. And you'll tell me the truth. Have you ever called a Palestinian a dog? Probably uh, as same I will call the, an Israeli. Okay. Do you think as you were growing up, the kids who you grew up with, the kids who then become, as you say, they grow up in the IDF, when they're in the IDF, are they calling Palestinians? Do they think of Palestinians as dogs? No. Do Palestinians think of Israelis as dogs? No. Well, then the series lied. Why? Because in the series, that's what Palestinians are saying. That's the lines they were given to say all the time. The mother says it. The, fa the I don't know if he's an uncle, whoever is the... I they're, understand where well, you are, are working. Okay, I understand. Right. And there is a theme that Fauda, I believe, is very honest about. And I said this before. They're all real people. But there's a side that hates in a way that the other side does not hate. What you have a sense of in Fauda is the unit is doing what it has to do not what it wants to do. It doesn't want to hurt somebody because they feel the other person is taking something from them. And the series then is very honest, it seems to me, to portray how the Palestinians feel about the Israelis and the way the Palestinians feel in Fauda is, you took my land and I want it back and nothing you do will ever 
make me want to give you any piece of my land. That's what Fauda's message is. That the human tragedy is that good people, because we like them. Again, you fall in, you, the nurse who ultimately becomes a major character with their own. You love her. And by the way, at one point, she meets a child. She's leaving an apartment. She meets a child. The child comes and says to her, because the way the nurse is, the doctor, it's a doctor, I shouldn't say nurse. The doctor is portrayed. She is a very sophisticated Palestinian who doesn't want the war, doesn't want the fighting. And she meets a child in a stairwell. And she says something to the child, what did you learn in school today? And the child sings a song for her. Yeah, How to kill Israelis. Yeah. That's what she learned in school. And you see on the doctor's face, disappointment. Oh. In contrast, you see the unit and the head of the unit. I'm not sure exactly what their titles are. Oh. And by the way, it's clear that the Israelis use the things they have to entice cooperation from the Palestinians. But ultimately, at one point, a child is very badly wounded in the eye. And the head of the entire operation, he's the head of the, he's on top of the commander. He says to the mother, let me bring this child to be treated in an Israeli hospital. This is, by the way, the wife of the man they're trying to find and kill, the panther. And ultimately he says to her, I will, I will protect you. I'll get you out of, you'll be taken, France or whatever you're going to be taken, and you'll be safe. You've got one side teaching children to sing songs about how to kill Jews. You've got another side, which although they, are, they do sometimes have to do violent things at the same time, they're bringing children to Israeli hospitals to try to save them. For you to say to me that there's no distinction in Fauda, I say to myself, I don't know what series you're looking at. There is a very big distinction, even <coughs> though, I'll say it again, we are shown Palestinians as human beings who have families, who want to live a, a life with their family, but they hate. They're driven by hate. And whatever drives Israelis, and I'm sure there are some Israelis who hate, most, is, most Israelis are not driven by hate. That to me is a major difference that we see, and I give Fauda credit for having the courage to show it, and you can now tell me how I'm wrong. <sighs> It's a long uh, conversation. I know. And it's, it's hard on you because it's not very brief. Yes, and it's a lot of conversation because uh, there's a lot of... Uh, Layers? Yes. Uh, Help me understand some of the layers. Mm. You need to understand why. Why what? Why the hate comes why we are protecting ourselves, why they are there, why the children sing song like this, you hate Jewish, you hate Israel. They not hate uh, uh, Jewish, they hate, uh, they hate Israel. Yes, although they call them Jews. They don't say, yes. they don't say the Israeli yes. pigs, they yes. say the Jewish pigs. So you need to understand from where is coming uh, answer yourself these questions and you understand I don't want to get into this uh, because it's 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 a big big thing that I cannot uh, uh, tell it uh, in English or in uh, three understand. words uh, but I, 
understand what you are say about uh, that showing this side like this. Yes, this is the reality. Mm -hmm. Yes, children sing like uh, things. That, yes, there is Israeli. Uh, there are hate Arabic, and there is Arabic hate Israeli. But there is another side that lo uh, want peace, want love, want Israeli uh, and Palestine will become something. And there is a Hamas that wa don't want Israel. Mm -hmm. And there is another uh, 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 movement that want. Who are the actors who are playing the Palestinians in Fauda? There are Israeli actors. There are Israelis playing Palestinians? There are Arabic, Israeli, Arabic actors. Are there are no Palestinians. Arab Israelis. There are Arab different. Israelis. Okay. Yes. There are Arab Israeli actors playing the parts of the Palestinians. Yes. Because the cast is magnificent, don't you think? Everybody is just superb. And, you know, we're watching, and I'm saying to myself, did they hire, you know, but you're telling me they did hire Arab Israelis for those parts. Mm -hmm. Was it a fun company to work with? Did you have fun or was it just work, yes. work, work? We have fun. Mm -hmm. We enjoy. We enjoy together. Mm -hmm. And again, I understand you can't tell me things about what you did when you were in the IDF. But you can tell me the extent to which you feel the way the unit is portrayed in the series, is it 50% real? Is it 80% real? Is it 20% real? Because all of theater has both the real and the imagined. So what percentage of what we see the unit doing do you think is real? 60%. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, it's happened. This series is a product of so many pieces. Mm -hmm. It begins with a concept. Yes. Okay, Lior and Avi have a concept. Yes. Then they have a script. Mm -hmm. Then you have writers. They, they don't write alone. You have a series of writers. Yeah. That's the creative process. Then they hire actors. Yes. Your job is to make it real. Mm -hmm. But before you can make it real, there's got to be a real, a reality yeah. that is gripping. And sometimes as an actor, it excites you to be in that kind of setting. And sometimes, by the way, you'll be offered a role. It will not interest you at all, but it pays the bills, and you'll take it. Yes. That's what, a, that's what it means to be an actor. This yeah, is a want, job. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, we are waiting to shoot. We are uh, exciting to shoot. For me, it was like uh, to. It was a closure of things. Interesting. Was it easy or hard to work with Lior? Ah, with Lior. It was easy because it. He was my friend. He is my friend. He is my friend. That's lovely. He is my friend. And he wanted. To happen, you want it to happen. If you wanted it to happen, you want to be a success. You want the the playing the the actors will success. So we push, and it was uh, yes. What's next for you? As an actor? Yes. Is there something you were excited about next or not yet? We are shooting for the. Season three. Season three. Yes. And when I say to you, what's next? Not only what's next in terms of an actor. In terms of where you are in life, what do you hope for now, Yaakov? I hope to write my own script about my own life and my own family. Um, 
I like to try something more deeper mm -hmm. for an actor. Uh, I think I'm uh, in a level that uh, uh, I can go into something more uh, uh, how do you say subtle, complicated, yes, complicated. Yes. And I want to maybe play here in. That would be wonderful. In the U.S. That would in be Hollywood. Wonderful. I don't know. Il Temenako, you are a special human being. Thank you. You're a great actor. Good for you. Mm. To be a special human being, that's even better. Thank you. It has been wonderful meeting you. And I understand, by the way, you're here. English is not your first language. It's not easy for you. You did. You were so patient with me. I am so grateful. Thank you. I hope there are other times. I hope I see you off camera, and maybe there are other times when I get to talk to you on camera. I wish you kol tuvah hatzlacha. Personally and professionally. Thank you. Very Everything much. you want in life. I hope all your dreams should come true. You're a very special person, and I thank Barbara and Art for bringing you to me. I hope we see each other very often. Thank, thank you, you Mark. Thank, thank you, you so much. The thoughts of Yaakov Zada Daniel, one of the stars of the superb hit Israeli series Fauda, available on Netflix. If you haven't seen it yet, do yourself a favor, watch it as soon as possible. As always, I invite you to be in touch with me with any thoughts or comments you may have to any of the ideas expressed by Yaakov on this edition of L'Chaim. Please email me, write me. Post on our Facebook page. Tweet me. I look forward to hearing from many of you. Special thanks to the dearest of friends, Barbara and Art Wernicke, for helping to make this edition of L'Chaim with Yaakov Daniel possible. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. L'Chaim, my friends, to life. of Jewish education in media. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, P.O. Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.